Hello friends, welcome back to Meal Essay Academy. In today's session, I have decided to discuss the new feature added or enabled on our Cloud of 2.0 private space called App Level Egress, Groups and Rules. Okay. So what it is, we'll discuss, we'll look at the, you know, uh, look at the actual difference when we add or when we uh, apply it at the application level. Before that, we will discuss, uh, you know, how the existing setup works. Okay. So if I look at the cloud of 2.0, okay. So once you create a private space or our, our focus is on the cloud of 2.0 and the private space part. The moment you create private space, you will be giving the dedicated IP range. So in that, you will get a private space. In that private space, you will get a cluster, which will be having controller nodes, worker nodes. And once you deploy your application, that within the worker nodes, the pod will be created and each pod will have one application, one to one mapping. Okay. So this is how the existing setup will look like. Now, if you want to control the traffic, inbound traffic, traffic and the traffic which is generated by your applications which are deployed inside your cloud of 2.0. How that traffic which is going out, how you control that. So right now we have ingress gateway and we have egress gateway. So the incoming traffic will be represented by the ingress gateway and then that guy will validate and then allow the traffic inside. When you're trying to go outside of your private space, the traffic always goes through this gateway, which is called internet gateway or the other way. If the internet gateway only allows the outgoing traffic, we call it egress gateway. So egress gateway, both the gateways will be having the static IPs and this static IP is how it looks. So this static IPs will be over here. So for ingress or those called inbound static IPs, and for outgress, we call it outbound static IP. So this two set of APIs will be representing the traffic. So what do I mean by that? When the traffic goes out from your private space, that traffic will be identified by one of these IP addresses. And this is public static IP address. Now your target system can whitelist that and allow the traffic. So if this how you know uh, target system allow the traffic from this egress gateway that means any app inside my application can go ahead and connect that right so that is that is the current setup now one issue here with this egress gateway and we can control the traffic by using firewall rules so if you go here and try to control the traffic we have option to give the only IP address. There is no option to give the custom domain. What happens if this target system has a dynamic, dynamic IPs? If the target systems, whenever restarted, it, 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 uh, you know, the new IPs were assigned to that, that particular, uh, uh, target system that we cannot control via egress gateway. Now, to handle those kind of scenarios where you have dynamic IPs, where you want to allow only dedicated or specific API traffic to that de destination, they have enabled something called app level egress. So app level egress rules, those you'll find it at the private space level. And in the private space, you go to the firewall rules. This is a section app level rules. Here you can create your groups by default you'll get default egress rule where all the traffic will be allowed then you can create your own i have created three different groups where i said like okay in this group only salesforce traffic will be allowed okay so you see here i have mentioned the domains now Via this domain, your IPs will be resolved. So I don't care whether those IPs are dynamic or statics or blah. So I can control now. I'm saying, okay, if I apply this group to a specific application, then that application will be able to connect only Salesforce. So now from both the side, if you go here, now this application has a group which says that you can go ahead and connect only group. You cannot go ahead and connect to the .NET API. 
Now this app level egress is a you know is a is a part of zero trust based practices. What do you mean by zero trust based practices? So zero trust based practices basically each and every interaction with your any point platform, whether it's incoming or outgoing, everything will be validated, authenticated, right? So that's where we are we are we are, we are validating or controlling the outgoing traffic from your application. Now, if you go back to the cloud of 2.0, by default, all the tracks will be allowed. Yes, you can go ahead and control it here, as I mentioned, but that you can control via IP addresses only. Here you can go and you can say that, oh, specific set of IPs I'm going to allow here. Okay, but we have seen the issue. If your target system or destination has a dynamic IPs, then there will be a problem. Okay, so this, app level level groups and rules will be solving that problem. So let me show the quick demo on this. Hope this is clear how the entire uh, you know setup looks like. Yes, definitely you need a cloud of 2.0 private space. Then definitely you'll get a cluster. Inside cluster, you'll get a worker nodes. And whenever you deploy the applications, each pod will have one single application. Okay. Okay, so let me go. To save some time, what I have done, I have created already a egress rule group. So very simple. One I have created for Salesforce, where you can see that I have allowed this traffic. Okay. I'll show you why I added these two things. Okay. I'll clearly show you this, why we, we need these two. Second, I have created a, a group for dedicated for my .NET API, which is allowing traffic to this particular domain, which is request. Third, I have created a group where I am not allowing any traffic, no traffic allowed. That means I'm keeping the group empty. There is no rule here. So what do you mean by this? If this, this group doesn't have rule means from this application, so whichever application has this group, all the outgoing traffic from that group will be blocked. Okay. So let's have a look at that one by one. So let me go back to my, <clears throat> my application. So what I'm going to do is, first I'm going to apply default group, okay? The moment I apply the default group, it will allow me to apply the changes. Let's go ahead, apply the changes. So what we have in this particular application, let me show you that the implementation part. Till that time, it will, it will be ready for our demo. So if I go to my, Post, uh, sorry, my any point studios. I have two flows in that application. One is trying to connect Salesforce and is trying to query the latest accounts. And second flow is trying to connect a .NET API to get the user details. Okay, so two flows are there from this application. They are generating traffic for different destinations. Now, once this application is ready, Okay, so let me go to Postman. So one, get user, trying to connect uh, .NET API. Uh, and another, get account, is trying to connect Salesforce to get the account details. So let's see what happens to the deployment. That's going to be ready in a moment. Okay, so all the traffic will be allowed because all to any disk. So once it's deployed, <clears throat> Let's wait for the deployment. Anything else I, we can discuss here? So, okay, so in the firewall rules. Yeah, so this is a section where you can enable this. You need to enable this. And then you, by default, you'll get this group where all the traffic is allowed. Then I have created these three dedicated groups for me. Okay. App is ready now, up and ready. Let's go to the postman. So send. So I should be able to get the account from my Sometimes this default this uh, default egress rule group creates a problem. This is my observation. So 
Yeah. If it is not working, what we can do is we can go ahead and uh, yeah, let's wait for that. Let's see. Still cancel and send again. Let's see. Okay, no problem. We don't want to waste the time. So we'll go ahead and say refresh this. And uh, <clears throat> of course, before that, let's see what error is this day throwing. So I'll take a pause here. I see what error we are getting. Okay, so you can see that we got the error. And I recommend not to use the uh, default default rules. Even if you know, sometime if this the behavior of this uh, group is not stable, so maybe we will sort of look into it. How to fix it? Okay, so yeah. So even if this thing now, it will allow. If you look at the rule, right? It says that it's going to allow, but the behavior is not as per the rules. Okay, so it says that. Okay, so now you can see. Uh, this traffic is also blocked, and this traffic. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say. application level firewall rule i'm going to say apply changes so salesforce specific see first this this will go to this domain to get the token and then this guy is going to get the account detail so there are two domains we supposed to whitelist on our rule section so there are two now, if I say apply the changes, going to deploy still see here now. And if you go back to the here, it will be blocked. Why? Because I'm only allowing the .NET traffic. Oh, sorry. Salesforce traffic. I'm blocking the .NET traffic. If I go back and change this to .NET API, okay, apply the changes. Go back to Postman, cancel this. Try now. I should be able to see the .NET one and my gate account. Okay. Gate account traffic will be blocked. Okay, this is blocked. So let me recap quickly. So if I apply the .NET API. It is going to allow me the traffic to this destination. If I go back and apply Salesforce, then it's going to allow me traffic to Salesforce. To allow the traffic to Salesforce, we need to add this too. So this will be different for you. This is my domain. Rest of the part will be same for you. So this value will get changed, only this value. Rest of the things will be common. So you need to add this to allow the traffic to your Salesforce. Now, if I go back and say, uh, allow traffic to all let me see this guy is behaving the way the way this is configured so apply changes it should allow me the traffic to both let me see yeah it's allowing now uh, cancel this create account 
no. So don't use the default one. Okay. Let's go back. And uh, go to the application level and say that I don't want to allow anything. Okay. The moment I say I don't want to allow anything, that means both the traffic, traffic to the Salesforce and traffic to your .NET API, both will be blocked. Let's wait for some time. And if you see, cancel this. Let's see. .NET not allowed. Both are blocked now. So not when .NET, not Salesforce. So recommendation is create your own group. Don't uh, you know depend on the default group. Okay, so create your own and whichever you want that you can apply to your application and then test it. Okay, so now I have my own. Uh, application level rules now. So see this application, I applied the .NET API. This application, I applied the Salesforce group. And this application, if I don't want, I can go ahead and say, no, I don't want to apply any rules. Okay. So all the traffic. Yes. Um, even you allow the .NET traffic here, in your egress, that traffic should be allowed. Otherwise, from here, the traffic will come till this point and you get blocked. Here. Okay, so for example, if I trying to, what I'm trying to say is, so I have application level, .NET API traffic, I'm allowing, but here, okay, here, instead of 000, any destination, I can go ahead and say custom IP address, and if I allow this traffic, if this traffic, this IP address does not belong to .NET API, then you are not able to connect .NET API. So your egress traffic at the private space level, that should allow, okay? So final check will be on the private space level. From there, if it is allowed, it will go out, otherwise it will block. There it's set. So on this particular board runs, this, okay? So hope you got the idea. You can have now, um, um, you know, you can you can secure your cloud of 2.0 deployments. Um, you can fine tune the ingress, egress uh, application traffic with your firewall rules at application level, at the private space level. Uh, you can control the egress traffic at application level, independent of your private space level firewall rules in cloud of 2.0. And this provides a higher level of security for your application and make it easy to manage outbound access to a SaaS applications like Salesforce, where you have uh, dynamic IPs or the system where you have dynamic IPs, you can control that traffic, outgoing traffic by using application level rules. So that's all. Uh, thank you for watching. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe. If you have any comments, you can uh, post those comments in the comment section below. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.